Alrighty guys, so I have that muzzleloader elk hunt currently going on. Just got back from New Mexico and uh, hadn't shot the muzzleloader since summer. So got it out, shot four or five shots tonight and it's shooting really good. So my brother and I are heading out in the morning to hopefully find a nice bull elk that we can uh that we can take so here's the shot those were my last three at 200 not too shabby with the old muzzle loader well we uh just got up here to our glassing spot and brain picked up three elk right off the bat nothing uh Nothing very big though for how big of a pain in the butt it would be to get over to them. I mean, the biggest one's like a little three or four point rag. But we're just gonna glass so we can basically see everything from this point, so. All right guys, we just spotted a big bull. Um, probably 2,000 yards. 1100 yards. I'm gonna drop down to this huge canyon, climb up the canyon just to the left of him, and peek down over on top. Brain and uh, Jed are staying up here. Got my muzzle loader, got a big bull spotted. Let's go. Hey, what are we doing? Looking for some earplugs for you. I got some. Good. Safety first. What remember? are you shooting today? I am shooting. Dad first though. 300 you to, Weatherby. You have to welcome them back to yeah. the vlog. Yeah. Oh, it's a welcome back to the vlog. This guy's people. new. Welcome back to the vlog. It's not a vlog. <laughs> we don't write. <laughs> welcome we, back we, to the vlog. It's a video <laughs> log. Video log. What are we doing? We, we are, are finalizing my sight end of my 300 Weatherby. Uh, I shot it at 100 yards yesterday and zeroed it about three inches high at 100 and I'm happy with uh, the centering and everything. So today I thought I would just verify it at 300 and then maybe at 200 also and see how that looks. Why are you so worried about getting your gun sighted in? It's pretty late in the year to be doing that. <laughs> I'm not hunting yet. <laughs> Tell them where we're going, what we're oh. doing. <laughs> well, we're going to be going We'll get hunting. it out of them one way or another. <laughs> Colorado. You got Deer hunting tag, yeah. In Colorado. <laughs> hunt starts on uh, Saturday so we're going to uh, head over there Friday and uh, get ready. What's this sheet? What's this fancy sheet you're showing me? So this is the Weatherby ballistics calculator. We have, have you put in the ballistic coefficient, the velocity, I measured the velocity, that's an approximation but it's it's measured but like an average of several shots. Then the bullet weight and other information. I put in the altitude of the area we're going to be in, which is 8,800. That's super high. Hornaday ballistic calculator. And then you can uh, find out where your bullet's supposed to be at these yardages. Sweet. We'll find out. What are, you, what are we working with? What is this fancy thing? Oh. This is a little bit of a custom Weatherby weather mark. I think it's freaking sexy. I don't know dude. if you guys knew this, but if you get on their custom site, you can custom order a gun. And uh, one of the options is one of our floor plates. So we sell a Hush rifle that comes standard with the Hush floor plate, but you can also custom order one when you order a custom gun. And that's what my father did. What color is it? Like, what's that called? This is bronze, uh, Cerakote. This is a really cool coating. It's very resistive to scratching and chemical wear. And uh, looks cool too. <laughs> and then I have... Uh, Vortex Black Diamond Scope, which I've liked really well. It's a like diamond how it works back. out to Vortex. <laughs> a Black Diamond Tactical is what it is. Oh, I thought it was oh, a Diamond good. Back Tactical. And it's a 4 to 16 power. Let's shoot that bad bear. Okay. You're going to go 200 first or 300? I'm going to shoot 300 first. We'll go worst case, like opening morning, long range. Where's your first bullet going to go? Let's see it. Cold barrel.
I heard paper. Can you see it? It's touching the bullseye. That will work. Yeah, that'll work. You want to do one more? And two to make she, it. She went at 200. That one's a little high. At 200. Sweet. So I think they're just about exactly where they should be, which Sweet. is good news. Because I don't want to adjust this anymore. I'm happy. I was happy yesterday, and it looks like everything's gone the way it should be. So, so, so this is the 300-yard target, and uh, I could see from the uh, shooting platform where it was, and it's to the right a little bit at 300 yards. That's really not too bad, and that would definitely kill anything you're shooting at. Yeah, Especially with 180 grain Scirocco. That'll work for 300. Yeah, that'll work fine. Good job. Also, new tires, just wanted to point out, Nitto Ridge Grapplers, what do you think? <laughs> Gnarly. I was due for some new tires and I really like these ones. What do you guys think of the Nitto Ridge Grapplers? They sure do freaking stick out. <laughs> we'll flip mud everywhere, let's go look at 200. Freaking yeah, so dead center, the, man. Uh, 200 yard target and uh, that's a good hit for 200 yards. I think this is probably about what the charge will say uh, it's about three and a half high at 200 so that's that's good still that's a good shot yeah and I'm glad to see it stayed centered so yeah your left and right looks money yeah I think we're in good shape you look like you're killing deer so far we just got to find them yeah sweet that'll be nice happy yeah I'm I'm confident that's the important thing for me I, I need to feel confident like I know what the gun's doing and I haven't changed anything on the gun except for I did put this little level on today, but I'm not expecting a great deal. Mostly I, I just want to feel like it's vertical and that's how I shot today. And so if you get on some crazy slope or something, you can look at your bubble level and see if you're... Here's my question for you. How, what's like the most comfortable position that you like to shoot? <laughs> right there. Off the bench, the okay. Bench. So Logan's packing a bench. Most no, guys I can like shoot, to lay down. Uh, pro, uh, prone, yeah. Laying down. With the pack. I need to have a pack yeah, okay. and I'm going to bring one. Yeah, I can shoot off the pack for sure. We'll have packs too, so. Well, I have, yeah. that's the most thing is just we're going to get, find a buck you want to shoot and then get you in a real comfortable spot and you're going to yeah. smoke them. I can shoot kneeling too, depending on the yardage, but I think prone is the best overall. Well, All guys, right. we are getting ready to head to our Colorado. You guys know what this hunt is. It's, it started out being the semi-live hunt six years ago, I believe. It's kind of changed over the years. This year, it's a little different because we had access to four season tags, but four season is over Thanksgiving. So um, we're taking my dad down on the third season, and then Eric should have a four season tag down there uh, following his hunt. So um, we've got seven days to make it happen, which I'm very confident. The states are the latest they've ever been for third season, so Buck should be starting to do a little rutting action. So send it over to Eric and then do this. It's gonna be fun. Say send it over to Eric and then do this. And do do that. that. You do it, Dad. No, send it over to Eric <laughs> and then do that. Send it over to Eric. Nailed it. You're a vlogger, dude. Hey guys, welcome to my portion of the vlog. As you can see, I am home sweet home. And it's Saturday. The day before I am going to leave for a South Dakota archery whitetail hunt. So we're going to shoot the bow. I sure enjoy these vlogs so we can keep you guys kind of updated a little more in real time uh, before everything kind of falls into place. So hopefully you guys are enjoying BSY 4. My next move, like I said, is going to be South Dakota. So I'm leaving tomorrow and tonight I'm watching the UFC here at my house. Super good fight card. Any fight fans, if you're a fight fan, leave a comment in the description box. But I'm going to shoot the bow, which I've been doing throughout the week. And it's been nice weather leading up till today. It's kind of overcast and a little bit breezy, but we're not shooting far. We're just shooting at the buck, the antlerless buck. Um, I'm going to take a couple shots. And then I'm going to show you guys the spread that I'm taking. I'm anticipating a tree saddle style hunt. I think it's effective and that's actually what I am looking for even if they said yo this is a really good spot in stock area I just want to shoot a whitetail out of a tree saddle during the rut and I think I have a good chance to do it in South Dakota looks like we're getting some drop in temperatures so everything's gonna work out perfect I think I hope so let's take a couple shots and then show you guys the stuff I'm hauling out to South Dakota with me all right let's do the dang thing Dang. 
it's on right there guys that shot felt super good again it's not very far but it's always nice to just make sure everything's working good and shooting straight all right i'm going to step back and shoot one a little further back it's going to fly right over the camera let's see if we can keep it in that same group well that last shot felt good and it's the farthest right one um all three are right there kill zone so bow shooting good now i can pack it confidently first two shots were money third one look at the difference in the penetration from about i don't know eight yards difference so happy with that let's go to the garage and pick out some stuff coming back and unpacking and unpacking for hunts is always a bit of a chore i've done a bunch of laundry since new mexico by the way we have so many good elk hunts that are going to be part of this series i'm stoked to launch all the elk stuff starting with archery elk in utah and then going on to new mexico with six more bulls so um, i always have like a bag of electronics gopros cameras cables batteries etc that's right there this bag it's first light bag always full of my clothing which i'm going to need to actually add some of my heavier stuff so in this little gear room here at my house i've got all the extra stuff in here and i might want to take some of these puffy coats i have some bibs it's going to be cold there's a little bit of a cold snap in south dakota so it should get the deer moving so i've got to pull some stuff out of there and then of course a whole bunch out of the garage so this is the program for me god it's always a mess no matter what i do i cannot keep this place really really organized well i'd say it's organized just not detailed but uh a couple other things that i always grab is this food tote it's basically got all sorts of leftovers from every single hunt so i always take it got ziploc bags cups bowls silverware etc and then this tote is my go-to tote i take it as well pillow gloves net gators hunter orange if needed hand warmers etc um, but on top of that we got the backpack spotting scope i will plan on doing some observation sits from a distance and uh glassing up bucks white tail bucks and trying to make a game plan on where i'm going to hang my stand so with that i will always take this coat if i'm going to hunt out of a tree so this tote has my tethered tree saddles my bow arms trail cameras which i always have to check and make sure out of state trail camera laws and regulations um, i won't mess with them if there's like weird in season stuff so i've got all my tethered platforms and whatnot and then these sticks these are uh timber ninja they're graphite these things are super light i always like to at least take five on my backpack so i'll probably take six sticks with me just in case so i'm gonna pull those out what else oh these guys check these guys i think i got these in north dakota little fake antlers so heck i got plenty of antlers i can use but these little guys will work what do you guys think do fake rattling antlers work as well as real antlers let me know i have had no success doing it with whitetails but i've had success doing it with mule deer but those were with real mule deer sheds so yeah i've got to pull all that stuff aside and i think i'm going to be staying in a hotel but i'm going to bring my camp chef stove and a bunch of my own meat that way i can cook myself dinner at night it's been uh frustrating some of these towns they'll close late at night and you hunt all the way till dark and anyways i want to eat my own food so i think i'll bring my camp chef stove and a propane tank so and then i always go through and see what else can i take like extra broadheads you know any other type of equipment and gear but that's kind of on my to-do list is really to start throwing this stuff together and then packing it in the toyota it's going to be like a 13 hour drive which sucks but it's nice when you get to the destination and you have your own vehicle and you have all the gear you need i could fly but then if i kill it'll be so much easier to pull the meat home in one of these yeti coolers so that's a game plan for me who's here oh neighbors 
So not a lot going on on my side of things guys. Just wanted to check in with the vlog, give you guys an update. And uh, thanks for watching BSY4. If you're not caught up, go check it out. And thank you to everyone who participated in the Hunt Camp giveaway. It was a huge success. And from what I've heard, it sounds like the sweepstakes company has found our winner. Guys, welcome back to uh, my part of the vlog. It has been a busy week. Busy week, a great week at that. Uh, we finally got to take Adam on his grand prize hunt, which was uh, a New Mexico elk hunt. I also had a tag if you guys have been following along. If you ever want to see like the real time action of what we are doing present day, make sure you follow our Instagram page. It's super easy to find at Get Hushin, but we pretty much load everything in real time on Instagram. So we'll go through each hunt, kind of share all the stories. I would say a more transactional condensed version compared to like the longer form, really edited uh, videos that Matt and Logan are put together for our YouTube channel. But I was fortunate enough to get a bull. Uh, I'm super excited about that. The, uh, the hunt turned out fantastic. We are gonna be uploading those hunts for best season yet 4.0 at some point throughout the fall. Uh, in other news, 4.0 is live and it's off, which is Alaska, part one and part two. Now we're transitioning into some pronghorn hunts and then we're gonna start getting into the good stuff. All the stuff you guys love, the elk hunts, uh, and then we'll have some mule deer hunts. We'll also have, I believe, a whitetail hunt or two. So, a lot of new videos coming down the pipe for Best Season Yet 4.0. I want to thank everybody too for the participation in the Ultimate Hunt Camp Truck Trailer Giveaway, whatever you want to call it. That just closed on November 3rd. Uh, we appreciate all the participation. We will be announcing the winner, the one lucky grand prize winner it's a $50,000 plus prize package, and uh, somebody's gonna drive away with a truck, the jumping jack, some Yeti gear, some Camp Chef gear, and kind of have like a pretty dialed camp all set up, ready to rock. A couple other things, we're never gonna reach out via social media. We will never DM you. Uh, that's just not protocol. We're gonna call you on your cell phone. That's number one. If we can't get a hold of you on your cell phone, we're gonna text you on your cell phone. We can't get a hold of you from those two means, then we're gonna email you on the email that is tied to your account where you place your order. Those are the three ways we're gonna reach out to any of our winners. There's a lot of scam pages, predominantly on Facebook, and you know what, they don't, they don't do anything about it. We've reported them a thousand times over. Doesn't matter, every day there's a new scammer. So just wanted to point those couple things out. Stick by your phones, ladies and gentlemen. If you see, uh, 801 number predominantly, or maybe a 435 number, that'd be Utah and Idaho, probably gonna wanna pick it up. Don't be the person that doesn't answer the winning call. So, had to do some freezer reorganization. Uh, I don't know how you guys are about freezer organization. I have a tendency to be fairly meticulous. This one is a work in progress. This is organized basically by stakes. We got a bunch of different stuff. Uh, they got some caribou, we got elk, we've got a variety of pronghorn, some mule deer, rockfish, salmon and halibut, Sitka blacktail, pronghorn, these are axis deer steaks, more elk. So that's my steak fish freezer. I was gone on a few trips and I came home and I caught my old freezer kind of on the fritz. She wasn't holding a freeze. Thank goodness I caught it reallocated everything, so I just had to pick up a new freezer. This one's my burger freezer. I'll show you what this one looks like. This is all burger. So in the burger category, lots and lots of elk. Uh, this was just my most recent elk. We've got some pronghorn and mule deer on this shelf. We've got caribou burger, sick blacktail burger. Again, lots of different elk, pronghorn. But that is just kind of all burger, to be honest with you. And uh, we eat a lot of the burger for a lot of different stuff. So it makes an easy way to organize both freezers. All right, I'm also finishing up a few loose ends. I had some kind of leftover. I had one bag of caribou leftover, and I had a bunch of grind bags that I hadn't got finished up yet. This was a, a gift from our friends at Camp Chef. They engraved that on a cool big old cutting board. So we've got a couple different things of caribou, and I just 
put them in the freezer, get them a little extra cold. And then this is a pretty money grinder we picked up. The, these guys meet your maker. We don't work with these guys. It's like a commercial grade processing, but it's sold direct to consumer. And so far it's been awesome. Grind meat's gonna go in here. I've got it on the coarse grind. And this is just a big meat lug. And then if you walk over here, this is one of their vacuum sealers. And so I'll just measure it out and I'll put them in just over one pound increments like so, get them the bag and sealed here, and then boom, we end up here. So I had a couple things of grind that I had zip blocked from a pronghorn a couple years ago that was just buried in the back. The grinder is a beast. It's like a 1.5 horsepower grinder. That thing will cut through anything. And it has like all the attachments if you wanted to do your own sausages um, and brats, things like that. I have not done that. I've mostly just been doing um, steaks and burgers because that's kind of what we eat the most of. Getting ready to finish up the caribou. Pronghorn is done. And I've got one more bag of some uh, grind meat that I got to take care of. And I will be officially caught up for this fall. Thanks for following along. Do us a favor, uh, make sure you go check out BSY4. Matt and Logan are doing a fantastic job putting those videos together and I uh, really think you're gonna enjoy the quality. Have a great day, we'll see you next week.